What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite for a massive video here for you guys tonight talking about how to play Vanguard early, some exciting details about all modes in the game, and even some other really surprising announcements from the press. Definitely stay tuned, but before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and let me know in the comments, have you guys pre-ordered Call of Duty Vanguard yet? And if so, which edition did you guys end up buying? If you guys need some help with what the editions each come with or which one you should probably get, I have a video talking about all that that I posted last night in which I showcase the three editions and the possibilities even a few more additions that may drop at some point in the future definitely enjoy making that video but earlier today as Treyarch said what a time to be alive right this weekend we have double xp and level weapon xp in black ops cold war and warzone on top of the reveal of vanguard which is still hot on our minds as well as cdl 2021 the call of Duty championships are this sunday hopefully you guys are tuning into that to also earn some exclusive rewards just by watching and it's gonna be crazy right lots of sweaty matches lots of great teams involved some phenomenal players can't wait to see what happens by the end of all of it this sunday Sunday, and I can't believe we're already at the end of the competitive season for Cold War. Just yesterday, this game got announced, and now it's coming to its end, which is pretty sad, but still excited for Vanguard nonetheless. I've been pretty busy with the Vanguard covers the past couple of days, so I do have another Cold War exclusive video dropping tomorrow on my channel, which is Saturday. It's been crazy this past week, right? Trying to talk about Season 5, how I'm enjoying it, then we have all this Vanguard information. It's been a lot to juggle, but we're getting back on track as we want to. Another important Vanguard video is also dropping later this weekend. Hopefully you guys tune into that. But starting off with the early reveals for Vanguard. As I mentioned yesterday, in case you guys missed this, we are already going to be getting the multiplayer reveal for Vanguard as soon as this Sunday during COD Champs. We're going to get, and I quote, a big reveal for Call of Duty Vanguard multiplayer, which is also likely going to be the day we get confirmation of an alpha of sorts, since one has been previously rumored to release a week from today, August 27th. Charlie Intel also reported on this yesterday, saying that an alpha was added to the PlayStation database, so that probably means it'll be PlayStation exclusive just like last year's with Cold War. But then we could tune into GamesCon opening night this Wednesday, August 25th at 11 a.m. Pacific to see a campaign gameplay walkthrough from Call of Duty Vanguard, so exactly like last year. So this is an exact parallel of Black Ops Cold War, right? We had last year the Game Awards show in which, at the very end of some campaign gameplay, they then announced, surprisingly, a PlayStation Alpha for Cold War multiplayer. So the same thing's probably going to happen either after COD Champs this Sunday or after GamesCon later this week. And we'll be like, hey, by the way, guys, you have a PlayStation, you can play the Alpha as soon as Friday the 27th. So I guess because I'm still enjoying covering Cold War, it just feels like everything's happening so fast with Vanguard. Now, all of a sudden, we have an announcement, then we have an Alpha date, beta dates, we're playing the game early, and then we're just going to have nonstop marketing for that game as Cold War slowly comes to an end with Season 6 later in October. But now when it comes to Treyarch, speaking of Cold War, yesterday we got the official confirmation that Treyarch is indeed going going to be working on Vanguard Zombies exclusively this year, which will mark a very first crossover between developers for a new Zombies iteration. Now, what would you guys have rather had, right? Treyarch go away after DLC 4 in October and then come back in 2023? Or do you guys want Treyarch to come back year in, year out, right? Time and time again, even with other developers, to bring forth a continuation of their brand new Dark Ether storyline. That's the way I would prefer it, considering how crazy Zombies was during Black Ops 3 and even Black Ops 4. During those times, quote-unquote, the golden era for Zombies, most people call it, everybody wanted that to happen, where Treyarch just took charge with Zombies and will be the only developers working on Zombies. Activision is finally making that change. But the good thing to remember is that once DLC 4 comes out in presumably late September, early October, once that comes out, it'll only be a little over a month, possibly even less than that, before they come back yet again with a new round base map at the launch of Call of Duty Vanguard. So Treyarch is hard at work right now, and I really applaud them for sticking through a rough development cycle for Black Ops 4, incorporating Blackout, you know, competing with Fortnite, and then having that game release a month early to compete with Red Dead Redemption 2, and then taking over COD 2020 from Sledgehammer to make Cold War the game that it is, innovating it the best they could, and on top of that, then working on back-to-back -back Zombies iterations. I mean, that is insane. So round of applause to all developers working on Call of Duty, period, or just any game developer working through these tough times with the pandemic and whatnot, but gotta give it to Treyarch for what they've been able to pull off. I mean, it's seriously magic. Can't wait to see what they offer in comparison to Cold War once Vanguard releases November the 5th. But when it comes to the event itself, yesterday in Warzone, the Battle of Verdansk. I do have to say, it was a bit of a different event from what I was expecting. I enjoyed it. It was fairly interactive, fun with friends. Wasn't buggy. There wasn't a big server queue. I think everything worked out fairly well. It was stable compared to the Nuke event or even the Cold War reveal last summer. I do still prefer Cold War's reveal events. I just enjoyed that one a bit more. But the one in Vanguard, or for Vanguard, I should say, was definitely beautiful, right? I mean, the part with no HUD was amazing. I mean, they get that gorgeous look of the planes coming in. Uh, it was great. I had a ton of fun on stream with you guys hopefully you guys did as well now the question is whether or not this event was canon to the current call of duty timeline i know it's 
confusing, but as of right now, the canon for Call of Duty is World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops Cold War, and Modern Warfare 2019, along with Warzone. So, if Vanguard is going to fit into this timeline, which it probably will, considering the Dark Ether storyline connections, then maybe this event was supposed to tell us a story as to how Verdansk got nuked. And then, I guess, after World War II, it kind of came back to what it was. Verdansk was quote-unquote rebuilt, then got destroyed again during Cold War, and got rebuilt shortly after that, as they confirmed the Modern Warfare campaign, but then got nuked for a third time over in the 2020s, right? The Modern Warfare event that happened not too long ago. So Verdansk has been through a lot, but it was confirmed that Verdansk is going to be going away with a permanent replacement of the Vanguard Wars map. It's going to be about a third bigger than this. And that's fine. I mean, they may bring Verdansk back somehow in Modern Warfare 2 next year. But as of now, the Warzone integration for Vanguard will get rid of Verdansk. Maybe even Rebirth. Maybe they'll just keep Rebirth because it is still fairly new, less than a year old. We'll have to wait and see. And this all kind of works. I know the canon is a bit messy for Call of Duty, but you guys get what I mean. Now, in terms of all the opportunities to play Call of Duty Vanguard early, as I mentioned earlier, we do have an alpha supposedly dropping next week according to the media right now. So I'll leave that there. There's about, what, maybe three days of exclusivity for PlayStation to play Call of Duty Vanguard early it'll apparently contain the champion hill mode which was also talked about a bit yesterday and i'll go into more detail about it later in this video but there's the alpha and i know it's unfortunate if you're on xbox or pc but like i mentioned many times in the past if you guys care at all about exclusivity or you care about just playing on the platform that call of duty is going to be focused on then you gotta get a playstation even if ps5s are hard to get just get a ps4 if you care about the exclusivity at all whether it's onslaught and cold war or early dlc or some other offerings here in call of duty vanguard but but in the trailer yesterday that showcased digital editions of this game, the very end of the trailer yet again does confirm for us that there is PlayStation exclusivity for this game, and we have yet to see what those offerings will be later on. Will it be an exclusive zombies map? Will it be a zombies mode? What will be the survival or onslaught for Call of Duty Vanguard? Keep you guys updated with that. But I guess we can say that for the beta at least, you'll be able to play it early if you're on PlayStation, probably for one weekend at least. One weekend on PlayStation and the following weekend will be for everybody else, as we usually get for the Call of Duty beta does every single year, right? That's probably how it's going to work, but it was confirmed that during CDL Champs this weekend, there will be 25,000 beta codes given away while you are watching the stream, so definitely be sure to watch to be able to win at least one of those beta codes, but if you do win one code, it does come with an extra code for your friend. I did that before, I think they're in Black Ops 3 and World War 2, so I'm glad to be seeing this again. You know, hey, you get an extra code if you want to give it to somebody who's in need, so that's fantastic, but what's also really important is about the early access to the beta by just pre-ordering. So how this will work, at least for PlayStation, is if you order digitally, I'm sure this won't work for physical copies, but by digitally pre-ordering, it will allow you to enter the beta servers one full day in advance, probably on a Thursday, then for the official beta to go live for PlayStation that Friday. So pre-order does give you a bit of an incentive with just the day of early access. And then for Xbox and PC, it'll probably be around the same thing where the following week, once the beta is ready to go live for the other platforms, a day in advance, so on that Thursday, if you pre-order on those platforms, you'll get to access the beta a little bit early. So there's the way you can play a little bit ahead of schedule if you're dying to get your hands on Call of Duty Vanguard. It's unclear what's going to be included in the beta, but at the very least, the alpha for PlayStation will just have the Champion Hill mode, similar to the Gunfight Alpha in Modern Warfare, and not so similar to Cold Wars Alpha, which last year contained quite a bit, many multiplayer modes and maps, so to speak. So we'll see how that goes. But don't forget about pre-ordering the game because you guys want just a little over 24 hours to play Call of Duty Vanguard early. Another big point to make about playing Vanguard early is the fact that if you have a copy of the game digitally pre-ordered from another country, so let's say you have a US PSN account, but then you make a secondary PSN account that's from New Zealand. If you pre-order the game on that second account, which will cost you some money, then you'll be able to also play the game roughly I think 16 or so hours ahead of schedule. This is what happened last year with Cold War and probably games before this. Not sure if they're going to fix that this time around and maybe track your IP or see where your hardware is located to prevent you from doing this. But last year with Cold War, again, if you had a copy of the game from another country digitally on your console and again, you had a different region linked to that console, you were able to play the game early. That's all last year. There weren't any copyright strikes given out for a streaming campaign or other features ahead of time. Of course, servers probably aren't live until everybody around the world has the game. 
I mean, sometimes there are exceptions where some servers go live for multiplayer zombies for testing purposes or for whatever reason, but unless that is changed, and this year that's another way to play the game early, if that is allowed, again, rules could change where they put out an announcement or a PSA saying, hey, you know what, guys, if you're not from so-and-so region, don't play the game early or you will be given a copyright strike. I'm not sure how that works, but it's also confusing with the embargoes because what if you are in a country like New Zealand or Australia, you buy the game, but the US and UK don't have the game yet, do you get in trouble or penalized for streaming it? I mean, does that really make sense? I'm not sure, but again, all that embargo information will probably be revealed in the next couple of months before launch. And I know embargoes for Vanguard specifically right now were lifted on the day of the event for content creators to go ahead and post what they saw early, you know, campaign footage. They describe multiplayer and zombies a little bit with the details they were given. So if you want to see what those content creators were told behind the scenes, then I will link you guys prestigious key down below in the description. You want to some great detail about what he was shown. Another really important point I wanted to bring up was season six for Black Ops Cold War. So as of now, according to the in-game battle pass timer, that is set to begin on October the 6th. Although November the 5th is the current launch date for Vanguard, that doesn't mean that Season 6 will only be active for less than a month. That just wouldn't make much sense. It's actually just how Modern Warfare worked last year, where in case you guys forgot, Season 6 was still active for Modern Warfare even when Cold War dropped, and that didn't properly end until the beginning of Season 1 for Black Ops Cold War. So you'll be able to still rank up and level up your Cold War Season 6 Battle Pass even when Vanguard releases. They confirm the integration is going to be seamless this year, as it was last year, where you can play either Modern Warfare, Black Ops Cold War, or Vanguard to level up your Battle Pass or rank up yourself. I mean, that's fantastic. The integration is not going anywhere, and I'm assuming when Modern Warfare 2 comes out next year, it'll probably end up replacing Modern Warfare 2019, where at that point, you can only play Cold War, Vanguard, or MW2 to rank up, do your Battle Pass, etc. You guys see what I mean here. It'll probably cap off at about three CODs total, where you have those weapons in Warzone, and you can use any one of those three games to level up, rank up, whatever it is that you guys want to do. So, it was also mentioned that the War Warzone integration and anti-cheats aren't coming until later in the year. So that right now is probably going to be season one. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I personally wouldn't want everything to drop in a single day on November the 5th. That'll be a bit too much in my opinion. Let's just focus on Vanguard as a whole on day one, right? Campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and then about two or three weeks later, we'll probably see season one with the big Warzone integration, a brand new map replacing for dance. Hopefully it's polished by then with the weapons and how they're balanced for just that. And then of course the brand new anti-cheat, which should change the game overall if you guys only care about Warzone. So a lot to look forward to, and I think the way that they're spacing things out makes sense. There were rumors before about how the Warzone integration would be on day one. I know VGC News also reported on that. That may have changed, or they said, you know what, maybe it'll be ready by that time, but let's just put that off a bit so that people don't get too overwhelmed with content, and there isn't too much that they build their load with right on day one. Now, it was also confirmed, for the campaign at least, that there will be elements that are fictional about the story, and to me that's totally fine, but what it seems like here is the game will be historically accurate to an extent, with the brave men and women who served and their actual names brought to life. I mean, seeing stories that games haven't covered that talk about World War II. I mean, seeing heroes like the very first African-American to land on D-Day, that's going to be huge to see. That'll be showcased in this game, but this game will also stand out and almost act like a soft sequel to World War II from 2017, where the war is over. But a special forces unit will rise to prevent another group in Germany from creating a successor of Adolf Hitler. So this is going to be interesting and probably is what the title Slipstream stands for. Of course, Charlie Intel also reported on the fact that that is the name of the internal alpha for the game. And Slipstream does reference back to a sitcom that was made many years ago, talking about how the Nazis apparently adopted UFO technology and were trying to develop other advancements to win the war or to do something after the war was over for those that were left in that party. And this could also be tying into World War II DLC 4, where there was a war map, I believe, which did show a UFO in it and was kind of playing around the idea that apparently there were UFOs or other strange technology being experimented on by the bad part of Germany. So I'm really looking forward to how they're going to put a spin on that for this game where it does remain historically accurate and, you know, covers things that did happen. But then on top of that, giving an extra spin to the story to entice players into understanding that this is not just a typical World War II Call of Duty or it's going to be a copy and paste of the game we already got a couple of years ago. The war is over in this campaign campaign, but there's still a lot more story to tell afterwards. So I'm sure it'll jump back and forth, but I guess you could say Vanguard's title has some more meaning now. Definition of the word Vanguard really makes sense when you pause this into consideration, right? The press posted this, I think it was last night or this morning, regarding this 
you know, unaccurate or fictional elements of the campaign that we're gonna end up seeing. I do like this route, and like I said before, it might end up being the truly polished game that Sledgehammer wanted to release many years ago, but just couldn't. So they just stuck with a very simple and grounded World War II story that was more ways than another historically accurate, and didn't really spin off into anything too crazy, unless you reference the zombies mode, of course. But the main characters of Vanguard were revealed, and that is gonna be Sergeant Arthur Kingsley, uh, Lieutenant Polina Petrova, Captain Wade Jackson and Second Lieutenant Lucas Riggs. The campaign of Vanguard will be exploring the rise of a special forces unit across all four fronts of World War II. And that to me is great, of course. Anybody out there saying this is woke is just out of their minds at this point. I shouldn't even have to say this, but it's not woke when your lead characters are women who did serve in the war, people of color who also were in the war. It's just telling the story the way that it happened, right? And on top of that, it's only woke when the writing suffers because of it, which Call of Duty is not known for, has never done before in campaign so people freaking out are just outing themselves as racist sexist homophobics that's what's going on here with the cod community which is by far just ridiculous and had to bring that up real quickly but on top of that in the actual trailer itself you have subtitles on there is somebody by the name of steiner who actually spoke during one of the scenes and of course what comes to mind first steiner from the Black Ops games. And does this mean we'll end up seeing an appearance of Steiner in Vanguard? Will it be almost his origin stories or something more about him that we didn't know in Black Ops 1? Could very well be the case. I mean, we do know that Steiner was briefly teased in the Zombies teaser for Cold War last year, and it never really panned out to anything. It never really meant much. There were rumors that in the files of Cold War, apparently Orloff is referred to as Steiner. So was there a plan at one point to have Steiner play a large role in D Machina? That then got changed, or maybe that got changed because they had an idea to tell a story with him in the next year's Call of Duty. So here we are now. So could this mean Steiner plays a role in campaign, maybe even zombies? But but this could also be a character just named Steiner, and it's a pure coincidence, which would disappoint quite a few people out there. Somebody on Twitter also pointed out the fact that a 50s-era German flag was seen on somebody's helmet in the trailer. So that would confirm, unless things change in this campaign, that would confirm that there will be elements of this game taking place in the 50s. So will this game take place in the entirety of the 50s, or will it just be back and forth flashbacks, flash forwards? Not sure how that's going to go exactly, but there were rumors almost a year ago now that apparently in Call of Duty 2021, we will be seeing elements of the Pacific Wars, and we will be seeing elements of Korea, Vietnam, and we'll be going back and forth. I think there was a rumor at one point that the full game would take place in the 50s or 60s with flashbacks to World War II, and again, that could still somewhat be true. We don't know yet, but again, the media reported that quite some time ago. It could be outdated, but I figured I'd bring that up just in case. Now, you seriously can't go wrong with this game, and my tweet yesterday criminally overperformed, even with the typo in it. Thank you guys so much for that, but as I made clear, you're going to be getting the best of about three to four worlds here with Call of Duty Vanguard, right? The Modern Warfare engine, tech sprint, and the movement from that game, so to speak. You get the beauty of Raven working on a full new Warzone map, a new anti-cheat. You get Treyarch zombies, and last but not least, Sledgehammer working on the direction of the game. Campaign, multiplayer. Cannot wait to see that. Sledgehammer, of course, has the best-looking cinematics out of the entire franchise, so how could you complain about this? I mean, this should make you feel better about the COD cycle if you prefer one that over another or maybe your YouTube audience if you're a content creator prefers one developer over another because of the content they produce individually so now you can get the best of all of that with Vanguard this might be a new precedent for Call of Duty's going forward right having certain developers work on certain modes every single year so that things hopefully don't get stale for people out there that don't want to wait a couple more years for Treyarch to come back and you know you can complain about burnouts and things getting too repetitive I guarantee you Activision knows exactly what moves need to be made to keep the franchise fresh going forward in the industry but last and definitely not least, confirmation of DualSense support for Call of Duty Vanguard as expected. There was support for it for Black Ops Cold War. It was great in case you guys liked that feature on the PS5 controller. Still wondering if we're going to end up getting a PS5 edition for Vanguard, right? Maybe a skin on the console itself, a certain Vanguard themed controller. Lots of possibilities there. Even a small possibility, and I say very small, of a collector's edition for Vanguard, which there was a cool one for World War II back a couple of years ago, so maybe we'll end up doing it again for this game. Still unlikely considering Cold War didn't have one either, but that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on all this information about playing Vanguard early? How do you feel about all modes in this game thus far, based on what we heard? And what do you think about the surprise announcements regarding how early we're going to be getting a reveal for multiplayer and then possibly an announcement for the alpha as well? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everyone.